Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona, and what you are seeing before you is my bike, and that is Glenn. And we are getting ready to do a 3D bike fitment on this episode of Toolbox Topics. So stay tuned, because it's going to be amazing. All right, everybody. So once again, it's Thomas with Get Out of Arizona. And as I alluded to in the intro, we are going to be doing a 3D bike fitment uh, for me today here at Trek Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix. And as you can see, I've got Jenny, Jenny, that's in the uh, <laughs> up in the rack. And Glenn is taking some final measurements and entering that information into the computer. But while he's doing that, we're gonna ask him some questions. So Glenn, taking these final measurements and entering in the computer, this is mm -hmm. so uh, for the cameras and the computer program to put in that information. So when I get on it and we do the 3D mapping, the bike measurements itself is accurate. Is that correct? Uh, so these measurements are actually basically for, for our own reference to see where you've come from uh, previously. Okay. Um, for example, if, if we uh, fix one issue and create another issue, uh, okay. we can always come back, see where we've come from, um, and basically use that as a point of reference. So I always like to uh, record before and after, of course, right. you know, see what changes we have made throughout the process. Um, in terms of what the uh, computer uses for numbers, um, it's only looking at you. It doesn't concern itself with the the bike, is, uh, the actual uh, measurements on the bike, it's just looking at the contact points where your hands are, where gotcha. you're sitting, where your feet are, um, and then uh, we do everything else from there and uh, can figure out what uh, what changes we need to make based on uh, based on how you look at the computer, essentially. Awesome. All right, guys, and as you can see the room, I mean, kind of zoom out here and got the different camera points mounted on the wall there, and we got one over here as well, and we're going to be documenting the entire process. You can see you got the other camera out there. So some of this is going to be handheld. Some of it's going to be from the tripod. Um, we'll get as much information for you guys as possible though. And then when it's all said and done, um, we'll talk to Glenn a little bit more about the process and he'll do some audio talk about it while we're actually going through the process itself. Um, um, but yeah, and then I'll give you what my impression of the process. I'm really excited because I have so many bikes and now uh, now, correct Brandon if he was wrong. Mm -hmm. He said that this would be able to be transferred to a degree to mountain bikes, um, any of the other bikes I own, bike packing, touring, everything like that, based mm -hmm. on these measurements. So, guys, when we talk about you know the cost of this, it's not just for one bike. Correct. It's for any bike yeah. that you currently own or may own in the future, or something that you take with you. So, I hope most of you guys are not getting any taller or any, any shorter. <laughs> of significance these, these you know. changes do happen though. yeah these things it's true it's Wait. true um but yeah so it's not just good for one it's good for everything so mm -hmm. think of it in context that way as far as the value guys and uh yeah so i'm going to get suited up into my bib and my suit because we're going to put some ping pong balls all along um <laughs> my areas and uh yeah that's how we're going to map everything out so uh so what i'm doing right now is uh, uh called wanding or basically painting the room um I'm just uh, using this tool here, which has basically three reflective balls, all set apart at a uh, set distance that the computer actually knows. Um, so going through all of the cameras here are able to capture those uh, within this 3D space and then uh, basically create a representation of that so it knows where each specific camera is in relation to the uh, center of the room. Gotcha. And what you're not going to see off camera, guys, is after he's done wanding the room, we're going to say the secret chant and get out our Harry Potter wands. No, I'm joking, guys. <laughs> They only do that on Global Biking Network. <laughs> I'm joking too. All right, so this is wanding. Now, how critical is this process? Like everything you're doing, I understand mm -hmm. is critical, especially with using cameras and everything like that. But for some, for people watching and everything like that, ah, whatever. Right. How critical is every step that you're doing? Everything is totally critical um, with this. Um, even if I had just used this equipment very recently. Um, just the smallest knock to one of these cameras, any any difference in the placement of the camera um, is gonna throw something off by, even if it's only you know a very small amount, an inch right. or two, um, it, it you know would basically defeat the purpose of, of going this what far we're doing. in fitting, I would say, yeah. Okay, At, awesome. at that point, you just using your naked eye is gonna basically do a better job and right. we're not gonna be getting false readings. It's not gonna tell me that something's happening that isn't happening, so very, very crucial that you do this. So remember guys, this is uh, training and expertise here this isn't, um, you know, 
reading an article and you know El Ocho Quarterly or something. Mm -hmm. I see some, you know, an unsavory person on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or something like that. There's a reason why all this stuff is done the way it is. So, um, so yeah. So definitely uh, remember that when you're going. I don't understand why it costs so much to do these <laughs> things. This is why, guys. Yep. So, <laughs> all right. So what you're looking at here, um, each one of these is one of the cameras in the room. It can be a little bit difficult to see, but if you see a little uh, white ball traveling around on on a few of those screens, that's what the camera's currently seeing. Okay. What looks like those brush strokes there, um, all of those are going to be different samples, different recordings, basically, of the distance between those balls, the angle they're at, um, so that it can basically calculate all that information and create a 3D image uh, using that. All right. So we are about to the point where we have enough information to get a high quality uh, example here. Nice. So this definitely isn't your uh your older brother's Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> this is high-tech stuff, guys. <laughs> Tell me where your sit bones are, where basically where you're supporting yourself the most. Okay. And that makes, uh, we can basically make sure that we're on the correct width saddle. It's, we're not too narrow, we're not yeah. too wide. Or for example, um, you may find that you're sitting in a spot on the saddle where it is wide enough, but you might be like up on the edge where there isn't a whole lot of padding or right. whatever the case may be. Always good info to have, especially if you get a new new bike with a different style of saddle. Oh yeah. So as you get all that guys, we're checking out where my sits bones are. Oh yeah. Measuring your butt. Yep. <laughs> I could tell you it's kind of narrow. I don't have a big booty. So I'm <laughs> so, just gonna sit down. So I'm gonna have you from the side you're on, I'm gonna have okay. you sit down like this. Try to keep your back uh, straight as you can once you get down. Okay. Um, and once you're on there, go ahead and just press all of your weight onto your sit bones. Okay. Once you've done that, you can hop right on back up. There we go. All right. Perfect. Got see, narrow. <laughs> and you can't see it. I don't want you to see it, but I got a narrow booty. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like we're just past a 138 there. Oh, man. Why couldn't that narrow booty translate into a friggin' not so big of a gut? <laughs> okay. So I'll have you stand right here. Um, everything from the waist down, keep completely straight. We don't want you bending at the knees at all. Okay. Uh, we're just gonna have you reach down towards the ground, however uh, far you're toes. comfortable going. Okay. You can touch your toes, awesome. If not, just go however far you can. Okay. Um, while you're doing that, you wanna make sure you also keep a straight back. I don't want you angling Bend yourself down so that you can get down further. So yeah, yeah. all the way straight from the, uh, the waist down and all the way straight from the waist up, arm, uh, arms gotcha. and hands down. It's kind of like yoga, guys, but without exactly. the mat. <laughs> Actually, my physical therapist had me do something like this when I started seeing them. All right, here we go. This is where you guys see how not flexible I am. <laughs> All right. Once you're down where you're comfortable there, I'm just going to set this level on your lower back there. Awesome. You can go ahead and stand right back up. All right. There we go. Oh, no. Nice and easy. Puts you into the green zone. That's good. You That's got, good. See? You got some flexibility to work with. Green zone, guys. <laughs> That's where you want to be. I could be doing better, though, I will admit. Mm -hmm. But we'll talk about fitness for mountain biking, road biking, hiking, all that stuff coming into 2022. I got a whole series that we're going to start doing. So, because remember what I've told you, it's not necessarily what you do on the trail, it's what you do off the trail that will drastically affect your enjoyment on the trail. So keep that in mind. I know. Uh, next thing we're going to do, um, I'm going to have you put your arms out, elbows bent at 90 degrees, so okay. straight out, bend at 90 degrees, and I'm going to have you go in like this, okay. try to touch your elbows together, just okay. want to make sure you can do that. So just straight out? Yep. Like this? Yep. And just go like that? Yep. Okay. Can you touch the elbows? Or oh, yeah. That's perfect. All right. That's all I need to see for that. So we don't have any limitations there. Next, we have a very fun test. I'm gonna make you do a plank. So uh, we'll have you get down on the ground here. Okay. Um, if you're familiar with doing a plank already, yeah. but uh, so not I, that, I will, I not will that save, the camera's gonna save you. The, uh, you guys will see me just go down on the ground, but. Yep. Let me grab right. a timer here. So don't start quite yet. Nope. I'm being timed, unless, guys. Unless you're just very, very confident. 
If you want to show off, you can start now, but Not otherwise give days. me a... Cool, you are all done. You ah. passed. Oh, bitch, that kid needs a cookie now. Holy smokes. <laughs> we can get you a Stroop waffle. <laughs> right. Well, the barbecue shot's right there across the way. Yeah, hey, there you go. <laughs> okay, um, next I'm going to take a measurement of your inseam here. Okay. Um, you already have your saddle at least close to where it needs to be, so okay. um, likely won't be super important, but again, just always good to have more information. Yeah. So what I'm going to have you do here is we'll have you pop your shoes off so you can just okay. go in here in your socks. Um, we'll have you butt the backs of your feet up against here. Stand right here. There's a little level, bubble level on okay. top. So you want to make sure you set the level. I see a lot of people will try to kind of move themselves backwards right. or forwards to set the level. Just make sure you're actually setting it on its own before it contacts you. Yeah. And then you're just going to let it up. that come up. Make cool. sure your shorts are pulled up enough that it's going to come up all the way. Um, and then. So I now I have to ask this, to like come up all the way as in like it's hitting my sack come up oh, all yeah. the way? Yep. Okay. Cool. And I'm actually going to. Right, so you guys can right kind of see the, the pogo board process. Yep. <laughs> I'll come over here. And so. Luckily, it doesn't doesn't come up too quick, but I wouldn't let go of it either. Yeah, no. Want to hurt yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Not after I just got done doing the plank. <laughs> All right, so cross All that. Right. Pull my shorts up. Yep. Feet, feet up against the, the thing. Perfect. And allow that, that to go up while keeping level. it level. And where am I drunk? We are at 82.5. You can okay. go ahead and hop off of that thing. There we go. Oh, yeah. That would have been the tragedy at the last moment. Yeah. Like, let it go. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. So we've just done the range of motion tests and everything, and it was pretty much what I already knew. I, all joking aside, I'm pretty flexible, though my left side is a little bit tighter than my right side, which, again, I knew from physical therapy and everything. So now the computer's calibrated itself, and everything looked excellent. Looked like it was 5x5. Five five. And so we're getting ready to start the next process of the fitment thing, which I think that's me getting into the pajamas Absolutely. and uh, getting some little marker balls put on me. So <laughs> as far as that goes, we'll get to dress you up. Um, <laughs> yeah. And you guys don't get to see me undress. I know mm -hmm. you're kind of we're hoping for that, but yep. I'm, I'm a little shy, you know, a little bashful, conscientious. So, no, I'm really not. But you still don't get to see me strip. So. That's, that's a different episode on, gotta, on my other channel. Got to subscribe to the Patreon for that <laughs> right, one. Right, exactly. So, all right, guys, we'll uh, we'll be back here in a minute and uh, we'll get started. All right, guys. All right. So it's coming to that point. Just kind of show here with this camera. We got the sensors right there, and we got some sensors right there. And got of course, there's the hat that I'm going to be wearing. And I kind of zoom in on that. <laughs> and then I got a cool pair of pantalones that I'm oh, going to yeah. put on. And there's those right Squeeze there. Into those. And uh, then we'll put some sensors <laughs> on my legs and everything. I'm going to look like a sexy bitch here in just a little bit. Now, <laughs> you were saying that the reason we waited on the, um, for the sensors and everything is not to give the computer a false reading as far as the ground level, that base level. Correct, yeah. Setting the ground level and doing that uh, wanding that we showed earlier, um, basically just so that the, the computer is only reading those three three points at a time. It can do its calculations. And then once we've set all that, it's it's uh, um, applied all of those uh, uh, measurements, um, then we can start uh, actually adding in markers so it can tell us where in space those are. Awesome. All right, guys. Yeah. We're close. We're getting close. As you can see, the computer's uh, pretty much set up there, and you can see that little space that we're going to be working with, that three-dimensional space. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it's time for me to change and get in the costume. <laughs> I'm Batman. No, not Batman. I would be Bane if I was anybody in that series. So, All right, all right guys, so we've got all the, all the little tags that we're going to put on me. And we can see we're getting everything set up over on the computer over here. That's going to be you. That's going to be me. And funny haha, -ha, I actually wasn't able to put on the pantalones because <laughs> uh, my ass is too fat. So we're just going to have to do it over the bibs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what size uh, shirt do you normally wear? Uh, extra large. Perfect. And here's one of those. Make sure these are the ones that. Not the ones that stick to it. All right. Cool. That'll work. We'll just add some adhesive to that. So we'll have you pop this on. You can oh, just okay. wear that instead of your uh, okay. instead of your normal shirt. 
something nice and nice and form fitting so we're not not seeing marker points flop around. <laughs> Alright guys, so I had to uh oops. as I talk into the lab, I had to put this form fitting shirt on. Um my grunt style one wasn't gonna work and uh and I understand why. You need uh, close skin contact for ah so the markers aren't uh flopping everywhere. So this is what I will be wearing and yeah. Talk about form fitting. All you right. can see my man titties. <laughs> I feel well, a little I exposed am. here, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, yeah, it's got to be accurate if we're going to uh, if we're gonna get her done. And I think I might actually have this shirt on <laughs> inside out, but nope, nope. You are correct. All You're right. showing the logo. Well, there we go. <laughs> Top down. If you want to throw this guy on here, so that'll be on your head. This is gonna go to the side so these come on to the back there you go perfect and you don't have to put the chin strap on or anything just as long as it's a uh, staying in place oh good stuff guys comment down below <laughs> i know you can't wait to make comments about this <laughs> so do it down below it's part of the thing but this is what you have to do and again i go back to where We've read the bike articles and or the articles in the biking magazines. You know, I'm sure everybody's seen a couple different ones on YouTube um, on how to, you know, do bike fitment in five minutes or you know whatever the case may be. Um, it ain't that easy. And if you want it done accurately um, and in a very precise manner, this is pretty much what you have to do. So, yeah, getting almost a skin tight suit and you. Know, put little sensors on all over here. Yeah. <laughs> so now for I understand that not everybody can obviously have has the, the the money because this process isn't cheap and we'll talk about that at the end. Um but who typically does the three D fitments? I mean, and this is probably a question I could have asked mm -hmm. at the end, but while we're doing this, yeah, we might as well. I, obviously, I'm not the average consumer. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this for the channel so people could see this. Maybe it's right for them. You guys also offer a 2D and a basic fitment and everything. Exactly. Um, but this full-blown one, this is very high tech. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about like the triathletes, the people that are competing in the criterium races and stuff like that? That's typically that uh, upper echelon. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd say people who are uh, racing and then also um, just people who are having um, issues that are preventing them from riding, preventing them from enjoying riding. Okay. Um, you know, if you're having to end your ride early uh, because of a, an issue with pain that's, you know, not related to just being tired. This or, could solve that injured. issue. Um, yeah. Some, some things may be obvious, you know, uh, just looking at you with the naked eye. Um, right. This can uncover small movements, um, you know, deviations in the position of your right. knee throughout the pedal stroke, things like that, um, that, that otherwise just looking at you on the bike might not be too obvious. So cool. it can definitely help right. out with those situations well, as well. There you have it. And just like we've, we've touched on mildly this past year on the few times that <clears throat> I've actually shown you guys stuff that I do out on the shooting range for instructors and everything, that body mechanics. Body mechanics has a huge role to play in everything that we do that's has that requires what I would call as athletic movement. Biking being one of those. Road biking, mountain biking, even if you're touring, riding the canal, whatever the case may be, um, it, it requires that range of motion. And so if you're doing it incorrectly, <laughs> um, or if there's something that is an unnatural alignment for your body, it's gonna cause discomfort and you risk injury too. So some things to keep in mind when you're thinking about getting this done. As I stand here with my little, my unicorn helmet on. <laughs> It feels like these are kind of like, like it should be shifted over because these are out of place. Like there's one here and there's one here and there's so one off to the side. Yep. It's um, just oh, tracking okay. the position of your head as long as it knows one's on top, one's on the side, oh, one's, okay. one's on the front. There you have it. Then, then we are good on that. Cool, yo. Uh, we can kind of fine tweak once uh, once we create the skeleton of you. If it if something's off from what we're, we're seeing in real life, we can make some small adjustments for that. Gotcha. All right. All right, guys. So we're still getting set up to put the markers on. Because the pantalones did not fit, uh, we had to put uh, sticky tabs on each one of the markers, which of course would be tedious. And of course, the little booties that was put over my shoes, those didn't fit either. 
So I guess, yeah, um, my butt might be narrow, but the rest of me is super chunk. I keep telling you guys, I got the inner fat kid. That's <laughs> a motherfucker. <laughs> Need the triple XL uh, booties. He's a something, man. So, so yeah. So, but we're we're getting there. And again, it's it's part of the process. You want to make sure everything's done um, precisely, so everything is accurate. And you know, this is what you're doing it for. If you wanted to rush, you would definitely do one of those little five minute jobbies. But that's not what we're doing here. So I promise. We'll get to the exciting stuff again here in just a second. So what you can see, guys, is there's a little schematic on the computer screen right now, and it's basically letting Glenn know exactly where he needs to put these markers. Again, accuracy is key, um, and you know for your optimum readings and um, results uh, for this, you want to make sure it's done properly. So. You may have to reposition that. We'll see how you look once you're on, on the bike, but sometimes those are a little prone to uh, hitting the crank arm and popping okay. off. But there is a bit of a leeway that we have with uh, with where we're putting them. Right. Now, obviously, not every bike shop across the country is going to have this type of fitment system. Mm -hmm. um, and we could talk about like some of the training that you had to undergo and everything like that, but like the cost for this system alone, I'm assuming it's probably somewhere what ten, fifteen thousand. Uh, I think that's uh, second hand somewhere around second that hand, range. Right around there. Um, this particular system uh, was developed from the ground up okay. um, by a shop called Faster, which unfortunately is no longer in business. That's how we came to get all this equipment. Okay. Um, but uh, um, there are many similar fit systems uh, that will use fewer cameras or just a more basic. Uh, system, okay. um, uh, Retool uh, being one of the major ones many people may have heard of. Um, uh, that won't give you quite as much information, but it gets you okay. a large part of the way there for um, a lower cost for, for the shop anyways, right. uh, getting into the equipment. Yeah, the software here we're using was actually for uh, um, 3D movies. Oh, okay. They've, they've uh, basically adapted it to work for fitting. Makes sense. So this is a one, one of a kind. I believe there's a shop in Germany that has the same system. Uh, we had the guys who actually developed it come here and help set it up and show me the ropes, teach me how everything works. Nice. And there you are. Nice. Okay, so again, you guys can't see the screen because I'm up here and I can't handhold, but a 3D skeleton has just been created uh, of me that I can see on the computer screen, and it looks pretty freaking cool. So, all right, cool. Then can I have you lower your arms down? Make sure everything stays the same. Stick one foot out at a time, just like this. Awesome. All right, I think we are good. Okay. So now we can start the fun part here. So for that, I'm going to have you now hop onto the bike. Okay. Um, I'm going to cut the oh, start. Yeah. Clipped in. Clip in. We'll have you to start pedaling, get into a nice, comfortable cadence. Let you ride for a little bit, and then we'll start seeing where we're at. Cool. You want me to shift or anything, or? Uh, for now, no. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to have you hop off. The, not, you don't have to jump off the bike, but just jump forward on the bike. I'm going to have you stand over the uh, top tube, so we'll have you actually unclip Oop. for this. That one came oh. off. You want me to take my watches off? It's a little bit weak. Um, it probably wouldn't hurt. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just... That's what it looks like when it doesn't see all the markers. <laughs> yeah, I see some of them. Get all twisted up. Gonna, you don't have to have a zip tie on you, do you? No, I don't. Can I get you put it in? Well, maybe now you can put it up higher, yeah, closer on my wrist. It, yeah, might it might work. That might do us. So a small or medium? Uh, a pretty small one. Yeah, I think this Velcro is a little, a little worn, a little weak there. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring us a zip tie, little reinforcement zip tie. And that one's still on, cool. So what I'll have you do is just stand over the uh, top tube of the bike if you have room there, and I'm gonna have you stand okay, so just like this. Okay, another stand over the top yep. tube. Okay, gotcha. We're gonna have you do what, what we call the T pose. So the computer will recognize you, so I'll have you put, yep, arms out like that. 
It's like Leonardo and Titanic. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> So just not picking up your leg. Can I have you move your left leg around a little bit? Yeah. All right. Cool. You can go ahead and hop back on the bike there. Cool. Thank you, sir. Cool. I'll have you shift up just a gear or two so you have a little more resistance on there. All right. If only this counted for my Zwift. Right? <laughs> <laughs> If you want to bring in your own smart trainer, we can make it, yeah. make it do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So you can see as you're riding how you're, you're kind of bouncing a little yeah. bit on your pelvis there. So could be a couple of different things. Um, could be from the saddle being too high. Um, could be too far back. Could just be that the saddle's not, uh, not fully supporting you. Right. So we'll, we'll take a look at that, but we're basically going from the ground up, so I wanna make sure your cleats are in the best possible position. Uh, we'll work on saddle positioning, make sure you're on a, the correct size and shape of saddle, um, and then work our way up from there. Okay. So first thing I can see on the right side here, your pedal stroke is nice and consistent. I'm not seeing your, your heel dip down too much, uh, not seeing any, uh, any weird movement there. Everything's nice and consistent, so that is good. Angle of your knee looks good on the computer. I do always like to double check that uh, manually, so we'll, right. we'll always measure that just to just to be certain as well. Um, but that looks pretty good, so I don't don't think being too high on the saddle is necessarily our issue. It might be just a, a tad high, but I uh, want to check fore and aft before we get into that. So that looks good there. And your back is nice and straight. That's good. Reach doesn't look too far off. All right. All right, so first thing I'm gonna check is the uh, angle of your knee. I'm gonna do that manually now. Okay. Just so we have uh, two measurements to go off of. So for that, I'm gonna stop you at the lowest point of your pedal stroke. And when I do stop you, make sure you freeze your position. Most people have a tendency to let their heel droop down when they relax, so right. I'm gonna have you spin up. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a warning. I'll say slowing down and stopping, okay. and we'll bring you to a complete stop with this right foot at the very lowest point in the stroke. Go ahead and spin up. Uh, maybe downshift a couple of gears. Just wanna get you spinning a little faster. All right. Get ready. Slowing and next we stop. Make sure you keep that heel right where it's at. Just want to pop this off and reset that in a sec. All right, 35 degrees on the dot, so. That is right where we want you for extension, unless we uh, um, can't otherwise solve that issue of your pelvis moving, then I might push you a little bit to the lower end of the range. Okay. Yeah, that was because I forgot to put my phone on vibrate, guys. <laughs> and it's, of course, potential spam. When is it not potential spam? <laughs> All right. Go figure. I'm not gonna do a retake, though. <laughs> And we will we'll come back to that measurement always to, to check that as we uh, as we make other changes to you. So okay, we'll have other other opportunities. Boom. All right, so I'm on the bike and I'm actively pedaling, and I can punch in a little bit more on the screen. But you can see my movements, you know, real time. That's that's what it is on the screen. So yep. you can see how accurate this software is. It's really freaking cool. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to guys give you, we can't put 
three, four, five different cameras set up in here because then that would affect the accuracy of the equipment because it would be in the way of them uh, monitoring and everything. So, but yeah, now you can see what the screen looks like and uh, we're gonna keep going. All right, so yeah, we had measured there manually. Everything looked good. Uh, next thing I wanna check is the knee over pedal spindle. Okay. And that is something I can only do manually because I All have right. to actually feel for the uh, that first bony protrusion under your knee. Yeah. So for this, I'm gonna have you slow down and stop much like we did before, okay. only this time it's gonna be with both of your crank arms level, right foot forward. Got it. And same thing as the other one, just make sure you really freeze that position. We don't want you drooping your heel down. Okay. So get ready, slowing and stopping. Those level. We're just gonna go for that first bony protrusion under the actual kneecap. So we are roughly a centimeter, maybe centimeter and a half uh, behind the pedal spindle on there. Um, generally, you wanna be somewhere pretty close to the pedal spindle right. if you're in a really aggressive fit. Um, well, sometimes if it was a, like a TT triathlon bike, yeah. that's all it was being used for, we'd actually have you in front of the pedal spindle. If it's just like long distance touring bike, no concern for um, Aerodynamics, you know, aerodynamics yeah. on there, you're gonna have bags on the bike, we might push you back a little bit f uh, uh, further back. Uh, where you are right now, I'd like to have you a little bit further, further forward, forward, try to get you at least somewhere on the spindle okay. and the pedal yeah. as a starting point. Um, that is good, because I think you were already pushed all the way back on the saddle, so oh, yeah. that should put us in a safer zone. So I will have you, um, you can either hop forward or hop off the bike, whichever you're comfortable Coming with. The bike. See how I was using that torque wrench, guys? You know me, I would have just tightened that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I have a great torque wrench back in the garage. All right. There it is. All right. Cool. We're all good there. Not going to mess around with the angle or anything else. So we're not throwing any other variables into the mix. Any immediate difference that you feel? Pressure where there wasn't before? Okay. No, feels good still. Excellent. Uh, being that we did bring you a little bit further forward, um, we've likely um, effectively lowered your overall extension okay. um, since we're bringing you closer forward to the pedal. Right. Um, so we'll double check that, make sure we don't bring you too low. Okay. Um, but I think this will be a good thing overall for stability. Okay. Um, uh, before, like I said, your, your uh, pelvis was bouncing all over the place. Yeah. It looks a lot more, a lot more static now. There's a sensor on the floor, Glenn. Oh. So I'm going to have you slow down just a minute here. So I'm to actually have you stop for one sec. Cool. You can go ahead and start spinning again. Sorry, I'll have you stop one more time, just to rest that one. All right, now we're good. So what we can see here is the actual movement of your knee throughout the pedal stroke. Right. So you can see you're coming to the outside at the top of the stroke. You're coming back to the inside. Um, so knees are definitely, uh, at least that side is definitely sticking out a bit. So we'll want to address that. Um, could be, the cleat positioning could be your saddle. Um, part of it, it could even be just force of right. habit. Yeah. Um, could, could be something you kind of have to focus on bringing your knee in, but we will uh, check all the usual suspects on that and uh, see if there's any uh, anything that we can do to help give you a more consistent stroke. Um, makes you more efficient. Didn't sound like you were having any, uh, any pain issues there, but potentially that is something that, that could cause pain. All right. But otherwise, it is actually pretty consistent. Even though yeah. you're coming to the inside, outside, <laughs> coming back in, I'm not seeing any like wild. Yeah. So that's good. All right, I'm gonna have you stop pedaling for just a sec again. I'm gonna select that other side. All right, you can go ahead. Looks almost exactly Identical, the same on that yeah. side. Yep. Okay, so, so what he was doing, guys, or what he's doing now is he isolated the sensor it's on the side of my knees and he's tracking that pattern 
And even though I'm coming out as I'm on the top stroke and in on the down stroke, it's still consistent. <laughs> yep. There's no erratic behavior or anything like that. So where kind of out like this, um, it's still the consistent stroke. Absolutely. But one thing I will run into a lot, you'll, like we were talking about, you, you've got a nice, smooth, consistent pattern, even though you are coming towards the outside further than we'd like. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll, we'll often see where someone gets towards the top of the pedal stroke, and then it's a kind of a jerky movement towards the outside, and then immediately pops right back in. Gotcha. That usually tells me we've basically reached a, a limit of flexibility, or, or you're just physically, like, right. kneeing yourself in the gut, basically. So that's not our problem. I'm, I'm gonna put my money on either cleat or seat. All right, watch it from the front here. Yeah. And do you uh, use these same uh, same shoes and uh, uh, pedal setup on other bikes? No, this bikes? is it. Okay, perfect, good. Yeah, 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 all my mountain bikes are flat. All right, that's excellent. That, that, that's definitely a good thing to note. I run into a lot of people who use the, the same shoe on a bike like mm -hmm. this as well as a mountain bike. Um, you're gonna almost always with a modern mountain bike have a wider Q factor yeah. um, with all the wide spacing boost spacing, super boost spacing that we have. I've just had um, too many close calls where off. I almost didn't unclip fast enough. Right. As much as I've ridden clipless pedals. Okay, so yeah, you're just and on flats. all the terrain, I'm sorry, I have a hiking shoe. So when I have to get up and push my bike, I'm not hey. uncomfortable. Exactly. I'll take a little That's extra weight on the shoe. You don't, sh don't shred your cleats to bits. No. <laughs> all right. Cool, so what I'd like to do on here, um, if we have room on the uh, shoe, I wanna move your cleats a little bit further to the inside and just effectively widen your stance on the okay. bike. So we'll have you pop those shoes off real quick. You can either stay on the bike or hop off, whichever no, you'd like. Off. That'd be fine. Clip. Yep, we are right in the center, so it looks like we got plenty of room to adjust that. Okay. So for you guys that ride clipless, um, you'll know this, that uh, adjustment on your cleat make a world of difference, man. And that'll mm -hmm. be the difference between hyperextending your knee um, or being, yeah, flexed too much, uh, too far out. And it could cause or be a factor of your knee pain if you're experiencing knee pain when you ride. Um, so it's best to check the fitment of your cleat and shoe in relationship to your knee and the arc um, because if everything's properly fit and placed, uh, then the knee pain could be an indication of something far worse than, you know, just out of alignment. So mm -hmm. definitely start there and then um, consult your doctor if that doesn't resolve the issue. But again, there's a reason why we do what we do as far as this stuff goes. So now I didn't necessarily have any knee pain. Um, you know, again, longer rides are going to be a little bit sore by the end, <laughs> but nothing that was aggravating me to the point when I'm riding that I would have to stop or cut a ride short. Um, but uh, you've heard me say it many times before to be efficient is Absolutely. always a good thing. And, you know, let's say I'm losing, you know, 2% power because of my pedal stroke, the lack of efficiency. Well, in a 10 mile ride, that might not be a big deal, but 50, 60, 70 miles. That adds up, so. Absolutely. Yep, even if it's not, not causing you pain, it's always always good if we can make you a little more efficient without making you less comfortable. Yeah. I'll let you try that for a little while before we look at anything, um, but definitely let me know if you feel any discomfort, any pressure where there wasn't mm -hmm. before. Obviously wanna make sure we're not causing any, uh, any additional problems that you weren't having. You may find the saddle feels a little bit different. It might not be too much of a, a noticeable difference. Do you? It almost feels you like feel... the saddle's been tilted just a hair forward. Uh huh. If I were to notice anything right off the bat, definitely nothing dramatic, but just mm -hmm. it's like a half a degree or something like that. So right. It's just, odd. just enough that you know something's different. Mm -hmm. yep. Any discomfort in the knees at all? Pressure, even if it doesn't nope. hurt too much. Okay. Very good. left that's what I saw visually too the left side still out a little bit more yeah so I do want to definitely take a look at the overall shape of the saddle as well okay. and and measure our, our width so I know we had you at a, a 138 or a little bit wider all right we'll have you stop again there 
check the other side just to make sure it's at least not any worse off than it was. You can go ahead and start pedaling again. Oh, sensor fell off. It was the one on the side of the knee. <laughs> All right. That side's very similar from the side here, like even before, stroke super smooth there, that's good. But yeah, saddle's the next thing I want to look at here. Okay. Um, but let me know if you if you feel any discomfort no. come up um, since since we made that change, if anything else feels off. Um, nope. Definitely let me know. Uh, I think overall that should be a bit better for you. Get a little more stable. All right. So. Uh, next thing I want to look at is the saddle itself. So I'm going to have you uh, hop okay. off the bike or jump forward. I believe like around 138 is about as wide as this gets anywhere. Might be a little narrower than that. Just pushed like a 135. So um, I actually like to at least experiment with putting you on something that is uh, just slightly wider in the back and just doesn't have quite as much uh, material up front. We want something okay. with a little bit more of a relief up front, okay. uh, so we might be able to put the, the saddle a little bit flatter for the position you're going to be in on this bike okay. as compared to, say, a, a mountain bike where that could be perfectly fine for you. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh, awesome. We actually have a verse in stock now. Start off with this one. If this feels too wide, um, if you find yourself sitting like real far forward on it, um, just to get support so it's not not pushing you kind of from the outside, right? Um, then we'll uh, we'll try out the next uh, size down. But okay. see how this guy looks first. All right, you can hop on the bike. Okay. The rest of the way. See how that saddle feels for you. Certainly going to be a, a difference, takes some getting used to. Um, and of course we can make adjustments to the angle for and aft positioning height. Um, is there anything off the bat that's causing any uh, discomfort or pressure? No, but I can definitely feel it's wider in the back. Definitely. That rump area, I guess you could say. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going for something that's a, a little bit wider where, where your sit bones are actually supporting yourself. Trying to make things a little more stable. My back feels straighter. Excellent. See, so pelvis is still rocking a little bit, but it's it's a lot a yeah. lot less so than we were uh, uh, initially seeing. Real good from the side, and we'll see differences. Even though we didn't change your saddle height, just going to a different saddle will effectively change the height just from the yeah. rails to, to where you're sitting. Uh, I'd say the. Um, even though this wasn't what we were going for, we're, we're looking to dial in the lower yeah, yeah. half of your body. I think we actually have you in a better position for your overall reach here. Um, do you feel any additional pressure uh, compared to what you, you noticed no, before? No, no, I really similar? don't. I just, like I said, my back feels straighter is what the biggest Definitely. takeaway from that is. Absolutely. You should be able to support yourself better with your core then in, in yeah. that case. Very good. All right. Let's see how far back we're sitting. That's where I want you. And at least from what I'm seeing right now, you do seem to be pretty well planted in place. Um, do you feel uh, when you first I got in there, were you moving around much? I don't feel off balance or wobbly or anything. Very man. good. It's, don't feel like you're sliding forward at all? Nope. Very good. And no pressure from the nose of the saddle? None. Very good. Very good. All right. And I think as far as the straighter back goes, um, this the saddle has a little bit more of a, uh, a kick up in the back. Okay. Um, that's going to allow you to rotate your pelvis further forward, and I think that's what's giving you that, that straighter back position. Gotcha. That's good. <clears throat> Everything looks good there. Um, I do want to double check, just manually measure uh, yeah. the same things we basically already looked at. Um, and if everything else uh, looks good there, I think we're ready to move on to handlebars. Cool. Uh, unless you had any other uh, nope. further concerns with the lower half? No, I'm good. All right, very good. All right, so we're going to do our knee over pedal spindle first here. So that'll be slowing you down to a stop with both of your feet mm -hmm. level, right crank pointing forward, right foot pointing forward. 
go ahead and slow down and stop. It's good. See, we're significantly further forward now. Right. Both because we slid you further forward and just a totally different design of saddle. Yep. Um, you're not having to push yourself quite as far back on it. Um, so I am going to try sliding this saddle just a bit further back. But before I do that, I want to make sure we're at least within range on your overall extension. So okay. go ahead and spin up again here. And um, this time I will stop you at the very lowest point in your pedal stroke. Right. Get ready, slowing and stopping. A little further, right there. Got you just a tad overextended there. So I'm gonna bring your saddle down ever so slightly. Okay. Hopefully that takes care of the rest of the uh, rocking we were seeing. Oops. And of course, saddles will take some time to get used to or see if you do have issues. Yeah. Um, any of the Bontrager ones here uh, have an unconditional 30 day guarantee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, act like I don't shop here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but for those people just, watching just, the yep. video who don't realize, that, that, that is you know. a nice thing, yep. Um, no, it's nice that fitment guarantee. And as you can see, guys, Boy, I mean, we're just changing little by little, and it's kind of cool to see my, oh, the computer screen. But yes, we're changing little increments. You know, eighth of an inch here, quarter of an inch there, a little tap tappy there as well. Um, and this, those little increments can add great dividends as far as efficiency, comfort, uh, and your ride, especially, again, I stress the longer rides. Now, not everybody goes out for longer rides like I do, and it's not an expectation that I have of the people who watch the channel. I emphasize that everybody should be doing this, you know, cycling for fun. It's enjoyment. You know, don't get goaded into doing something that you aren't capable of doing or that you just don't want to do as far as that goes. Um, but yes, for those people that are going on the longer rides, all, all of this definitely pays off. Absolutely. <clears throat> Boop -boing. All right. Looks good. Have you hop back on there? Think I've never ridden Clippus before. <laughs> oh, that feels good. That's an improvement for you? Yeah, definitely. Of course, Any, as I whoop. lose them. Um, before I put this back on, I'm going to have you just spin out for a little bit. Okay. Um, make sure everything's still feeling all right. Any tightness at all towards the top of the pedal stroke? No. Cool. We'll use the computer to double check, make sure there's no. You know, sharp movements towards the top there. Any, any visible issues? And any, any relief of pressure on your hands? Does it feel pretty much about the same? Well, like I said, my back feels straighter, still feels uh -huh. straighter. This, I feel the difference in my hip and pelvic area. Okay. That adjustment that you just made more loose, I guess you could say. I don't know. Yeah. It just feels comfortable, like. Absolutely. So. Now, guys, obviously, we're sitting here. We're doing these adjustments and everything here in the room. The very end, the third part to this series, will be me going out and taking her for a ride. An honest, you know, 40-mile ride. And that's going to be the, the true tell as far as. Absolutely. how everything goes so definitely and that's why i always with anybody i do fittings with um we always offer a, a follow-up if need be right plenty of times people don't need it everything's great um but yeah you may notice something on a on a longer ride that uh wouldn't be noticeable here or yeah. you know when you're out of the saddle or especially going with a new completely new saddle different stem position it, it takes some time to kind of oh, get yeah. yourself get in the, to it. yep yep in the position that you're going to naturally fall into so. all right off the top. Yeah. That guy back on. Cool. And go ahead and start pedaling. I think you might still be all right without doing the pose. Cool. That's good. 
And since we brought that down lower, still no uh, no pressure on the nose of the saddle. No. Nope. Nothing else weird there. Okay. Very good. Now, what you guys might not realize, and I haven't really said, is that Jenny's going to get retired to the Wahoo Trainer <laughs> and be my Zwift bike. But to be able to still pedal two, three, four hours on the right. trainer in comfort, that's worth its weight in gold. Again, um, there should never be a time you're on your bike where you're unhappy or angry or this sucks or it hurts or anything like yep. that because you're not, <laughs> it's Beats ruining the, the experience for you. So, <laughs> so just kind of keep that in mind. Cool, so everything's looking good there. We'll yep. come back to the lower half of your body, um, but like I said, anything that you think of yep. uh, while we're going through the process, if you need to go back and, and double check something, just let me know, um, and then we will, of course, uh, check it again before we finish up completely. Yeah. Um, but I think we are ready to uh, move on to the handlebars. Cool. Unless you had any other concerns? Nope. Very good. All right. So like I said, you had a nice straight back, and certainly uh, swapping to that saddle seems to have uh, helped that out. Oh, absolutely. Um, so we're good there. Um, the one thing that does give me some concern, it looks like you're having to lock out your elbows to achieve that position. Is there, is there, are they locked well, at all or you're just... This can, is more of a lockout stance there? for me. Okay. Yeah, and if I come up here, it's just because I had them back here so they're rotated different. Gotcha, I come up gotcha. in the hoods with that traditional thing, mm -hmm. they're rotated out a little bit more. Okay. Cool. Just, yeah, just don't ever want you to be in a position where you, where you feel like you mm, have to lock yeah, your elbows no, out, not out, um, out. To, to reach that position. So, very good. All right. And usually from here, I'll go to here to bring myself up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even kind of just put my hands on the pads again just to kind of stretch right. that back. Or obviously down in here. Definitely. Would be the three common positions if I'm not in the drops. Absolutely. All right. So first thing, just want to make sure our base bar is in a good position before we move on to the uh, air bars here. Okay. Um, from what I'm seeing, doesn't look too bad, but um, the, the shoulders are coming a little bit further forward than I would like. So okay. if I can decrease your reach a little bit, yeah. I think that'll be better for you. Sure. Would you say you generally feel more more comfortable riding? I'd say maybe about here. Half inch. To Let's start out at a half inch and see what that works. Okay. Cool. So uh, you do have a pretty flat transition here. This is a pretty uh, aggressive uh, reach on this handlebar. Um, that's which a I don't think bar, is a big. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't don't think that's a, that's going to be a big issue for you. Um, but we can basically just shorten up the whole cockpit um, a centimeter on here. We'll take you from a 100 to a 90 millimeter stem. And then once we get onto the uh, aero bars, uh, we may may want to make an adjustment one way or the other to, uh, to optimize that position. But right. uh, looks like these bars do have quite a bit of adjustability in terms of being able to oh, move yeah. the pads back and forth. So more than likely we'll be all right. All right, we'll have you try that out. Better? Yeah. Very good. That was, that was instant gratification, guys. <laughs> Just that Excellent. <laughs> one centimeter of adjustment. Cool. So yeah, the angle of your back looks pretty much the same. Um, you're just, yeah, you're not having to pull forward in, nope. in this position. So no, and very, I can already good. tell where that being a little bit further forward, even though they weren't locked out it just that right. half degree rotation of my arms, this feels better. Excellent. Cool. So want to figure out where our most extreme position is, make sure we have you in the optimal uh, spot. So I'm yep. going to bring you back yet one more size. Okay. We'll see if that's, that gets us to the point where it's uncomfortable or not a benefit for you. Okay. And, uh, we can find our sweet spot. Go to an 80. Again, guys, body mechanics. Now I've been riding this this way for quite some time and it was working. Just is gonna work a whole lot better. And one one okay. thing I definitely focus on is make, making sure you can comfortably ride out where you are now, where you can easily oh. access your uh, uh, brake levers, shifter, um, all that stuff. Um, yeah. I, do, I do see a lot of people where it's like, you can ride out that far, um, but you'll right. often find yourself choked back a little further. And then when you do have to use your brakes in an emergency situation, we don't want you having to jump forward yeah. or being so fatigued that you can't. And this feels even more comfortable than the last one, Very the last good. position, so. Excellent. Yep. And that reach is still looking good from the side. Jesus. Has your foot going crazy from this. <laughs> <laughs> 
losing. We're, we're warming you up. Losing sensors <laughs> left and right. Let me stick some new uh, adhesive on this. All right. Now guys, if you made it this far, hallelujah, you're saints. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you to hit the like, the subscribe, and the bell notification icon. Uh, if you like what you've been seeing and you want to help support the channel in uh, 2022 that would be one of the best ways you can do it it helps out the video it helps out the algorithm um and we do appreciate the support you know we grow every month we continue to grow every month and uh and we don't want you to think we take would take that uh, type of support for granted so and then uh yeah um this kind of concludes part one as we're going forward and i guess we could have done it after we done the lower half but that slipped my mind um so uh, first and we're gonna be going into part two you guys are gonna kind of fade into that in another separate video but I do want to say uh, thanks to Glenn and Trek Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix uh, for uh, helping us out doing the fitment and everything like that uh, there's links down below to Trek Bicycle Store of West Phoenix there's also one for Copper State bike and hike so if you want to demo bikes remember you always see that in the toolbox topics give them a call set the demo up they have carriers for you as well don't forget to follow us on social media Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Those links are down below. And I have to remind you that some of the other links you see down there for various um, uh, parts, uh, gear that we use in creating these videos, stuff for the bikes and everything, some of those might be affiliate links. So we earn a small commission, although that price doesn't increase for you. And again, it's just another way to help out the channel. So on that note, guys, as we close out part one of the Bike Fitment series, what do we always say? Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards on that trail and we have to ask although we're indoors what are you waiting for get out arizona we'll <laughs> see you on that next adventure right glenn absolutely all right <laughs> okay so we're gonna get uh get the sticky back on and get going and everything like that we'll <laughs> see you guys in the next episode all right cool totally forgot to have a good breaking point on that <laughs> <laughs>